Have you personally witnessed examples of the top 10 ways to misuse a microphone? Well, you know what? People that are up at the lecture speaking, they've got stage fright, they've got inexperience, they don't know how to adjust the mic stand. That's where your job as a servant and as the audio tech are to get up there and help those people out so that they stop looking like idiots and using the microphone through their foreheads. Stanky Framps here with another wacky sound education. Today we're going to talk about mic stands and microphones. On most mic stands there are actually five places that you can use to adjust the microphone location which gives you a lot of flexibility. Number one is here, two is here, three, four, and then you can pick up the mic stand and move it around. That in itself gives you a lot of flexibility. That's five ways you can adjust the mic and get it exactly where you need it. This grip down here is where you adjust both the height and the boom angle, if you wish. You tighten that up and it gets locked into place. The one thing you do not want is to have rotation at this joint. This is an assembly joint for connecting this boom onto this mic stand and therefore this should be tightened up and locked in place and not allowed to rotate. Next adjustment point is here. You can see this controls the tilt. Uh, there are different kinds of adjustments here. Most of them these days have rubber pads and you're, when you're tightening up this screw you're squeezing the rubber pads. You don't, want it, you don't want it really, really tight where it doesn't move. You want it tight enough so that it can handle the weight and doesn't droop. But if someone wants to make an adjustment, you use that sliding surface and you can make the adjustments you need to make and the boom will stay in place after you make the adjustment without messing with the screw. There are other kinds that have teeth that grip each other. Those kind you don't want to really force because it will cause those teeth to rub against each other and damage it. Next place of adjustment is right here. What that allows you to do is slide the boom in and out, but the other thing it allows you to do is rotate the microphone to the correct orientation. So rather than try to uh, adjust that by messing with this screw, it's best to tighten this, get this screwed on really nice and tight, and then don't, don't use this as your point of rotation, because all that does is it loosens and it becomes floppy. I want you to be able to see the components here of the mic clip. You can see that it just screws onto the mic, the end of the, of the shaft of the mic stand. And these are meant to be uh, interchangeable so that if you have a mic that's of a different size, you can get a different size mic clip. Once you get it screwed on fairly far, you can use this knurl nut here to tighten up against it. And then this joint should never be moved again. Another important point is that when you have a really long reach, for your boom when you want it to go way out there to be able to reach to the speaker. The stand can become tipsy if you don't have the boom placed over the foot. If you have the boom between the two feet, it becomes very tipsy. So be sure to get the shaft lined up with the foot and then if you need to move it so that uh, you get the right angle, you can pick up this, the stand and move it. The fourth one is the actual tilt of the mic itself. This doesn't have an adjustment knob it just is a friction fit and then whatever position you put the mic in it stays and then the last adjustment as I said is you can move the mic around the mic stand around wherever you need to get it in the right position and of course the microphone comes in and out of the clip by sliding it in and out as a, as a sound guy you always want to dress your wires and get your wires looking nice and neat so we don't want to leave our wire hanging like this you can take it simply back along the shaft drape it over this nut and then you can either wrap it around the pole or they make these nice little clips which we then capture the wire with and clip onto the clip onto the pole in a couple of places. This is actually a very good position for the microphone. I can turn the pages clear, cleanly and clearly without hitting the mic. The microphone is right in front of my mouth and it's only about three inches from my mouth. The other thing is that the height is away from the podium, not touching the podium, no matter how much I mess with it. It comes in from the side and also kind of, I'm speaking down the, straight down the barrel of the mic, and alignment-wise with the audience, it kind of uh, is not distracting visually. The audience soon forgets that this boom is here. So this is what that configuration looks like from the side. 
I've got about this much distance. My visual line down to my page is clean. I have no problem reading. Another option is to have the mic stand directly in front and have the boom come straight at the speaker. That's maybe a little less distracting for the audience instead of seeing a boom come across. It just depends on how much reach you have with the boom, how big your podium is, and how big the table is. But again, I can see my pages clearly. I'm standing right in front of the microphone. I can see my audience clearly. It's a perfect position for my microphone. And this is what it looks like from the side to have the mic stand directly in front of me. It's good for the end of the mic to be even with the end of the podium, actually. If you've got the right height and the right angle, it doesn't interfere with the speaker's field of view to the audience or the field of view to his book. You might want to come back a little further, but you can see by the time you come to the middle of the book or the middle of the podium, his distance is a foot away from the mic. That causes you to turn your volume up higher, which can lead to feedback and distortion. This is an example of what you really probably do not want. The mic is a good distance from my mouth, but it's just too low. It's in my way visually for my reading. My line of sight goes through the microphone, and when I turn pages, you know, I'm right into the microphone. The boom mic stand was really created in, as a necessity for musicians, more than lecturers standing at a podium. Typically, musicians are pretty adept at getting the mic stands where they want them, and they may not need your help. But beginning musicians will need your help. Different musicians might have different preferences, perhaps out in front, completely out of their way and gives them complete freedom to turn around and talk to the, talk to the rest of the band. Or it could come directly from the left. This tends to be the most restrictive because the neck of the guitar will run into the boom. Or the right, this allows them to move pretty freely. The neck of the guitar doesn't interfere with the boom at all. Let me throw in just a bit of extra information about microphones here at the end of our session. They are built to avoid sound coming in from the back, and that's how they prevent feedback. And if you, a singer or speaker covers that up with their hands, they're defeating that purpose. So try to convince your singers to not cover up the back and sing into the microphone like this. It looks cool, they're hugging the mic, but they're distorting the output that's coming from the microphone to your mixer. And another thing about microphones is that this covering here does come off. It's got a fuzzy piece of foam over the actual microphone piece, as well as there's fuzzy foam inside this screen. So both of those things are called pop filters. It keeps peas from popping into the mic. And sometimes you will see a foam ball that's added on top of a microphone, and that is yet another pop filter it's a good thing to have on top of your mics. The speaker many times doesn't know what these knobs do and how they control the mic stand. And they're up there struggling with it. That's where you've got to be paying attention and get up there and help them out. Come and join us next time for another Wacky Sound Education.